Hey y'all, and welcome back to Carbon Scoring, the best place for comics, history, and action figures. And we are here with one of the most incredible mystery boxes of all time, because this one is looking at the six-inch figures from DC Direct's Batman the Animated Series line. Now, normally we would just start grabbing figures and talking about them, but this line and this cartoon is so spectacular that we really need to understand a little bit more about the importance of it first. Batman the Animated Series was a revelation, something completely unique from everything that had come before. While previous animated efforts were always directed at children, the Batman series was far more adult in tone, including real fights and bad guys with actual guns. It was serious enough that it was shown during prime time on Sunday nights on Fox. While numerous hands go into making something this incredible, the success of the series was in great part due to three men, artists Bruce Timm and Eric Rodomsky, and writer Paul Denny. Tim was the artistic genius behind the character designs. He used a simplified yet timeless style, influenced by everything from the Fleischer Superman cartoons of the 1940s, to Archie comics, to the clean lines of Alex Toth. Radomsky created the film noir mood of the series, having the genius idea of drawing the backgrounds on black sheets of paper, thus providing the dark, foreboding visuals of an Art Deco Gotham City, fully modern, but filled with designs from the 1940s. Combine that with the writing of Paul Denny, whose character development took previously one-dimensional, laughable villains and created vibrant, sympathetic antagonists for the Cape Crusader. It was nothing less than genius, and DC Direct finally gave it the action figure line it deserved. All right, now that we have an idea about the historical significance of the cartoon, let's start taking a look at these figures, beginning with the man himself, Batman. Oh, wow, look at this. And I grabbed a Batman from the Justice League cartoon to give you an idea of the scale, of what a difference the six-inch scale makes over the figures that we got from the Batman animated lines as well as the Justice League lines. And you can see how much more detail is able to be put into these figures, the increased articulation that's available, but just really all of the sculpting details that make Bruce Timm's character designs just come completely to life. Now, you can see that this figure... And each of these figures comes with a bunch of pack-ins. He has a different cape. He has a stand that has the animated turnarounds on it. He comes with different hands. And that's going to be the same for all of the figures that are in this box. So you'll have to bear with me as I pull them out of these bags. Basically, I started collecting this line when it came out around 2014. It lasted from really kind of 2014 to 2016 with a few extra kind of thrown-in figures uh, over the couple of years that followed that. But unfortunately, I never had any place to display these. And so they ended up, I kept them in package for a long time because I just wasn't sure what I was going to do with them. And eventually that was too cumbersome. So they just ended up in this box and they have been stuck, trapped in this box ever since. So this is really the first time that I've broken them out and really genuinely taken a look at them. So it's going to be so fun to go through these and see some of our favorite characters. And hey, let's hit some of the highlights right off of the bat. Here he is, the boy wonder, Robin himself. And this is Dick Grayson Robin. And this is the Robin from Batman the Animated Series. So to give you a little bit of a timeline of this cartoon, the first 65 episodes were titled Batman the Animated Series, and they showed on the Fox Kids Network. And those were the ones that were appearing in the afternoons every day after school. Those are also the ones that were briefly shown on primetime on Sunday nights. Uh, and they had kind of the original art style. They greenlit a second season of 20 episodes that most of them ran under the title of kind of the adventures of Batman and Robin. Uh, and it was still... Dick Grayson as Robin at that time. And then the show ended on Fox and was picked up by the brand new Kids WB Network. It was Warner Brothers Animation WB that was producing the show the whole time. And so a couple of years after the end of the original line came Batman The New Adventures. And we will see 
characters from both lines of the show. Actually, the Batman that we just looked at is from the new adventures. It's one of the newer ones, whereas this Robin came from Batman the Animated Series, the original cartoon. And I'll try to explain that as we go through all the different ones. Actually, here's a pretty good example of what I'm talking about right now. This is Batman from Batman the Animated Series, the original cartoon. One of the easiest ways to tell is he has the yellow circle on his chest. His utility belt has kind of the little sort of pellet sort of looks as opposed to the black out the black bat on this one and the pouches that were on the utility belt. You can also see a little bit of a difference in their body types. The uh, Batman from the, the New Adventures, a little bit thinner at the waist and broader at the shoulders uh, with tapering of the legs. This was the look that was continued through the Justice League cartoons, whereas this was the original animated look that Bruce Timm designed for the series. And this is the figure that actually came in the two-pack from the unbelievable movie that debuted in 1993, Mask of the Phantasm. And this is the Phantasm figure. I'm going to grab all of the accessories so they don't get lost. This is the spectacular Phantasm figure from that really great movie. And honestly, if you go through the internet and you get a list of the best Batman movies of all time, Mask of the Phantasm is going to show up really high on that list. It has a terrific twist, which is not spoiled by any of the accessories that came in this pack. Good stuff. Let's get into some of the bad guys, because there are so, so many great bad guys that were designed for this series, beginning with the Mad Hatter. And the Mad Hatter, look at just how incredibly goofy he looks, but just how accurate to the art of the show. Again, you get so much more motion out of these figures because of the size and the scale. It also allows for so much more detail in the sculpting, but it still maintains that incredible animated look. He comes with multiple accessories that I'm going to keep in this bag so that I don't lose them because we're going to actually set these guys up. We are working on a revamp of the Secret Lounge for 2022 and these figures are going to have their own display down there. Now, we mentioned that Dick Grayson was the Robin in the original animated series, but when it came time for the new adventures of Batman, he had grown, he was an adult, and he had taken on the guys of Nightwing. And this is the Nightwing figure. I love how stylized with just the black jumpsuit with the blue bird and how it how it comes off of his chest. He's got longer hair. Instead of the classic domino mask, he has more of this V-shaped mask. And they really, you can tell he's an older man compared to in his youth when he was Robin. Just really cool showing the growth and the development of these characters. But probably the best thing about this series is they were not afraid to go out on a limb and bring out some really, really crazy, zany characters. And it is much, really hard to find a crazier, zanier character than the Creeper. Now, the Creeper will always have a special place in my heart because he was created by Steve Ditko, the creator main influence on the creation of Spider-Man. And he just has such an insane look to him. I'm glad that he came with a stand because Creeper is one of the more difficult characters to get to stand up because of this huge mane type thing that he has on the back. But just those garish colors and everything just make him such a standout in any action figure display. Keeping it a little bit calmer, here is the villain Firefly. And again, really, really cool. I love his accessories. He's got his gun. He has that great head sculpt of Firefly. He has these neat wings that come off of the back here. And for a character that's predominantly gray, there's really a lot going on to bring out all of the excitement and action with that one. Now we talked about one of the founders of the Marvel Universe. Let's talk about the other one, Jack Kirby. And we did get a Kirby creation 
in this line with the demon Atrigian. I think I'm saying that right. Uh, I actually don't know a huge amount about the demon uh, other than it is massive and it is really cool. And he comes with, I think his name is Clarion, uh, this super creepy young man right here who comes along with the demon figure. But it's great to see some representation of Jack Kirby. Even kind of got a, a pseudo Kirby crackle look to his wristbands there. But really cool, really, really cool demon figure. Oh, here we go. So I do love Batgirl. And I think I mentioned in the intro piece about how Archie Comics were one of the influences for Bruce Timm's designs of the characters. The heart-shaped faces, the big eyes and big smiles, and you can really see that with Barbara Gordon here. Now, this is the second version of Batgirl. This is the one from the New Adventures because the original was more of the gray suit that you saw in the 1960s, but really, really fantastic Batgirl figure. And, you know, she's super petite, so she's so much smaller than Batman, so they look totally appropriate together when you have them posed together. Oh, here's one of the very best ones. Oh, this is so exciting. So here is someone who was created specifically for the animated series. This is the Gray Ghost. So it turns out a young Bruce Wayne would sit in front of the television and watch the adventures of the Gray Ghost. And so this was... Bruce Wayne as a boy. This was his hero and one of the biggest inspirations when he became the Batman. Now, one of the really great Easter eggs about the Grey Ghost character is that the voice actor who played him in Batman the Animated Series was none other than Adam West, the actor who portrayed, who portrayed Batman in the 1966 television series. So what a great nod to the history of the character and really cool to see the Grey Ghost for the first time depicted in action figure form. A more mo modern Batman villain would have to be Bane. And again, you just have to be so impressed by the massive scale that these figures are and the fact that they really worked hard to keep all of these in scale with each other. I mean, this Bane is huge and he has all of that detailing that you expect. I mean, he really does come directly off the screen. Really nice articulation here at the waist so that you can get, you know, some some super cool poses. He's got this cord that's running that way. And I mean, again, let's take Batman, who is one of the bigger figures in the line. I mean, Batman is not a small figure. And you can see that Bane just dwarfs Batman. So really cool that they were able to keep it that way. Ah, uh, yes. Here he is, Harvey Dent Two-Face. Now, this is a good one because this is one where they made some changes in the design of the character, and they stuck. So, Two-Face in the comics obviously had the split down the middle, and he was always depicted that way. You know, you had the Harvey Dent side, you had the Two-Face side, but in the comics, he was wearing, like, kind of like a green... Um, suit on this side and it was like a plaid suit on that side and it just was it would have been really really busy in animated style plus it would have been really difficult to render that over and over again and so Bruce Tim made the simple decision the simple and brilliant decision to go black and white what says Two-Face more than black and white you can see the tie is inverted his undershirt is inverted and so the whole character becomes this black and white contrast of itself. He does have his coin right there in his hand. Uh, and, and this look started with the animated series, but then has kind of made its way not only into comics, but also into some of the mass media that you see of Two-Face. Really cool. And very much created for this, for this, this series. Oh, uh, here's a nice one. Another figure that we just really don't have very many examples of. We have the ventriloquist and Scarface, and he's got his little puppet. Look at how awesome that little puppet is. He sits like this, and, and he can actually sit right on the ventriloquist's arms. And, and the ventriloquist is such a 
nobody. I mean, just, you know, everything about him says just regular, you know, not very worrisome guy. And then you have this demonic little puppet with the giant scar running right down his face. It looks like he can hold his gun. I think there's a, a weapon in the uh, in the, the accessory pack there. He's got his hat. He has his cigar. Just a really great combination. Can't wait to get those guys on display. Oh, yeah. Yeah, here's his Tommy gun. So the uh, the mobster Scarface comes with his Tommy gun. Great, great stuff. One of the most renowned changes that was made in the cartoon was with Mr. Freeze. So Mr. Freeze was kind of a laughable joke of a character in the Batman mythos. Uh, if, in fact, he was actually dead at the time that the cartoon first appeared. But Paul Denny, as the writer, his first episode that he wrote was called Heart of Glass or Heart of Ice. And he really gave Mr. Freeze some incredible depth where he showed that he was doing it all to try to bring his wife back. This is the Mr. Freeze actually from The New Adventures. It's a little bit of a different design. He, he actually comes with these robot legs that his head can move around on. That's why his head is detachable. Uh, I'm not sure if I have both versions of Freeze in here, but the characterization of Mr. Freeze was so popular for the cartoon that got incorporated into his comics continuity, and he was actually brought back to life specifically because of how well he was done in the cartoon. Here's another figure that had two different versions, Poison Ivy, and this looks like this is the New Adventures version of Poison Ivy. Yeah, she's much more white and pale. Uh, she's got her irises pretty well blanked out. Really, really cool head sculpt. Again, you can see some of that Archie Comics influence just in the overall design of these female figures. Ah, okay. And I think this actually is, is a really great time to pull out this Catwoman figure because this is Catwoman from the first cartoon series. And she was very, very consistent with what her comic look was at the time in the, the gray suit. Uh, she has, uh, a lot of times she's depicted with blonde hair, but you can see how much smaller her head sculpt is compared to the head sculpt of Poison Ivy. So this is from the second version of the cartoon. This is from the first. And I think we'll probably see another Catwoman that uh, shows what she looked like in the second cartoon coming up. And once again, another great contrast of Robin the Boy Wonder. So here is the Tim Drake Robin figure. And look at how young and kind of childlike his frame is so much smaller. He still has all of the great articulation, but he just seems like he's much more of a kid, certainly more so than what we saw with the Dick Grayson Robin from the original cartoon. But I love how they changed the costume up. He's got his red tights as opposed to the green. The R has the italics. It's still the same costume, but it's different enough with the black cape with the yellow on the inside. It's just really cool. And he's so much shorter so that when he is with Batman, you can really catch the difference in their sizes, which really you know gives a, a pronounced effect to the difference in their ages. So cool. Who's next? There's so many good ones. Oh, here we go. The penguin. Now, this guy almost doesn't fit in the bag. He's so round. I mean, look at, this thing is almost a perfect circle as you go around and take a peek at Oswald Cobblepot. So he has a very similar look, I think, through both versions of the cartoon, because sometimes when you get it perfectly right the first time, you should just stick with that. Uh, he is articulated. He's got a little bit of movement there. He's got some ankle movement, but a character like this, he doesn't really move a lot. And so he just kind of sits there and waddles around, but really great penguin. He comes with several different umbrellas, some that are open, some that are closed, different hands to allow him to hold those. So when we get these things in motion, they're going to look really, really cool. Zantana made a brief appearance in the cartoon. She has that newer look that we've seen. Here's a good one. Here is the New Adventures version of Scarecrow. Now, I mentioned that some of the, the characters 
had a very different look from the first round of the cartoon to the second. Probably none of them had as big a change in their look as Scarecrow. This is a very, very creepy Scarecrow with the noose around his neck, that, you know, floppy hat that hangs down in front of his eyes. He has his, you know, stick shaft here, and he's long. You can see, you know, he has that, that length that a Scarecrow should have. Really cool figure. Hopefully we also have the uh, the Batman Animated Series version coming up as well. Can't forget this guy. I think this is just the classic Batman from uh, Batman the Animated Series, the very first one. Again, a little bit more round, more so than the angular nature that we saw with Batman the New Adventures. Uh, just a little bulkier through here. And that was how he was drawn. That was how the animation looked. But, you know, a very clear design change from one, one show to the next. Still the same artist, still the same feel, but just enough of a design change that you could tell the difference. This bat signal, I believe came with, oh, and it works. Hopefully you guys can see that shining there. So this is a working bat signal. I think it came with a deluxe Batmobile set. I do have the full size Batmobile that goes with these figures. Rasha Ghoul, one of the more interesting characters from the comics that's made his way into the world of Batman. Really sweet cape. You can see here he can stand, and that cape goes all the way around him. He also comes with an alternate head, which I think is really nice. Kind of has that, you know, crazy Egyptian sort of look to it. Fits right on the top there. Very, very nice for someone who is one of the most challenging villains for Batman as a detective. And while we're thinking about it, we do get his daughter, Talia. And she, of course, came out later in the series. But, you know, if that's not a femme fatale, I just don't know what is. Really, really solid. So it's great that we got both of them. All right. Here's another character that was created specifically for the animated series. No, not Killer Croc. Killer Croc has been around for a while, and so he has this just mammoth, mammoth figure. I mean, I can't even get this guy in the screen. He's so big. But this is a pretty terrific look for Killer Croc. But no, I'm talking about Baby Doll. So Baby Doll is a character who is an adult. She's like in her 20s, but she has a rare genetic condition where she doesn't grow older. So she's forced, unfortunately, to always look like a child. And so she was a child actress until she, you know, turned to a life of crime and she fell in love with Killer Croc. And so that's why they're teamed up together. Uh, you know, she, she is modeled after the 1920s uh, superstar Shirley Temple. And that kind of goes along with that whole Art Deco feel that the show had. If you've watched any of the cartoons, you can see that the architecture is very much that like 20s through 40s Art Deco. They have modern things like cell phones and helicopters, but the cars, the police officers, like everything has that kind of timeless, you know, 1920s to 1940s vibe. And I thought that was one of the things that really was so cool about the way they placed this cartoon, like in a specific, you know, kind of time and look. The creators would refer to it as Dark Deco. Uh, because everything was black. Like, the entire series was almost exclusively shown at night, uh, which is so different from anything that was happening with kids' cartoons at the time. This guy probably requires no introduction. Here is the Joker. And cool stuff. I think most everybody knows that the Joker on Batman the Animated Series was voiced by none other than Luke Skywalker himself, Mark Hamill, who did such a great job with Joker. He was able to take the Joker's laugh and, you know, almost treat it like a musical instrument. He could do so much with that laugh. This is the second version of the Joker. He's a little more, I don't want to say toned down because that's not really something that ever applies to the Joker, but I think we'll see a different Joker in here and we'll, we'll try to compare them so you can tell the, the difference between the two. And here we go. Another character who was specifically designed and created for Batman the Animated Series, Harley Quinn. 
Yes, you know Dr. Harley Quinzel. Uh, she is now a star of stage and screen and everywhere that you could possibly be. I do think that it gets kind of lost in the shuffle that, you know, her outfit is that of a Harlequin. That's the name of this type of court jester is a Harlequin. And so it just became such a, a clever play on words to call her Harley Quinn. Oh, it's just so great. Uh, she is you know, one of the, the biggest breakout stars of this show. She actually crossed over into comics in the Batman animated comic book, issue 12. Uh, if you can find one of those, you should probably hang on to it because it is now worth hundreds and hundreds of dollars as the first DC continuity uh, issue involving Harley Quinn. So great. All right, I've been saving. You can probably see this thing right here. I've been saving it because I wanted to find the figure that goes with it. Here's one who I actually had to look this up. She did appear in the comics before appearing on the show. This is Roxy Rocket. Now, I wasn't super familiar with Roxy. She was a stunt woman who kept getting into trouble because she was seeking more and more and more danger. But she came as a deluxe figure with this fabulous rocket that, you know, she can actually ride on. And she's got this great sort of Amelia Earhart flight jacket. She has a very Amelia Earhart look to her. And this rocket, you know, has that that Flash Gordon Art Deco sort of look. Again, this is the kind of thing that sort of timelessly places this show in in like a bygone era with where there's just so much style for everything. I love me some Roxy Rocket. That is so cool. This looks like a Robin thing. Okay, hey, here we are, the Riddler. And this is Riddler from the first comic series. He looked a little different in the second, but I just love that head sculpt. Look at that chin and the way that grin is so crooked. As a matter of fact, I think if you look at it, you can see how that grin makes a question mark. It really, it really truly does, starting there and then coming around to create the question mark. So another just brilliant design feature that these toys and these drawings and this cartoon had together. So cool. Let's get into some of the cops of Gotham, beginning with Detective Harvey Bullock. Again, Harvey uh, did appear in the comics prior to being on the show, but I think he really took a much huger role after his appearance in this cartoon. You know, he, he just has that big cop look, you know? I mean, again, he's a pretty hefty figure. He's got that kind of full neck, you know, his, his tie's undone, his coat's hanging open, just a really, really cool. And, and he, he, again, having these sort of cops really led to that noir, crime noir, detective feel of the series. One of the things that I will complain about about the Batman movies is they tend to focus more on Batman as a superhero and less on Batman as a detective. That's something that I think that Batman the Animated Series did a much better job of, is incorporating the fact that he really is the world's greatest detective as we go through this. And, of course, if you're going to talk about anyone with the Gotham City Police Department, you have to get out Commissioner James Gordon. Again, great figure. Love that swirl of his hair, the glasses, kind of that big, jowly, huge jawline. The fact that, you know, he's a little older, he's got a little bit of a paunch on him, but he's still, he doesn't look nearly as disheveled as Harvey Bullock does, because he's the commissioner. You know, he's been working hard, his tie is undone, but he still is the guy who's in control. Oh, so good. So good. Oh, okay, I didn't know if these made it in here. So, they kind of did some sort of, like, further adventure figures. So, here is uh, Azrael, Batman. Um, this comes from the comics when Bane broke Batman's back, and this character... John blah 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 I can't remember his name kind of took over and was the Azrael Batman and he was not a nice guy and it's really unusual to see him in this animated style but I do think it works it's a pretty cool candy colored figure there um oh another one kind of from that extended series so I do not believe that Jason Todd as the Red Hood ever appeared on Batman the Animated Series or The New Adventures of Batman, but I'm thankful that we got a really, really sweet uh, Jason Todd Red Hood figure out of this line before it finally, finally kind of petered out. We are going to come back to that. Uh, and here's another one 
that was in sort of the same sort of, I want to say these came out in like 2019. So several years after the, the line had really kind of ended, we've got uh, Deathstroke, the Terminator. Mostly thought of by me as a Teen Titans villain, but again, just really cool to have him in this sweet animated style. And he has all of his stuff. Oh, including, that's cool. He does have an alternate head sculpt with his patch. So it's always kind of sweet. You know, he, this part of his mask has the eye completely covered because he's blind on that side. So uh, very sweet. My favorite appearance of uh, Deathstroke was in Identity Crisis, written by Brad Meltzer. If you get a chance, uh, read that book. It's really good. And we're going to also go with another sort of alternate version of Batman, a potential future version of Batman, and that would be Batman Beyond. And so here we have... Terry McGinnis, Batman Beyond, very cool design, certainly reminiscent of the Batman costume, but its own unique thing, and I like that. It has that very angular look to him, and he came with an old Bruce Wayne, so very, very choice that we got these two in a two-pack together, and the, um, oh, and I think we got Ace the Bat Hound as well, so that's cool, and you got Terry's wings, because one of the more frequent features that you would see of Batman Beyond would be to have him, and they should pop right on, have him with his wings open. And so I'm sure there's a, oh, I've got them backwards. I'm sure there's a better way of doing that, but very cool feature. And I'm glad that they included that in the figure. There's an extra stand. Okay. Oh, this was so cool. So this was like a Batman accessory pack. So he came with about a bazillion different heads. So you have basically the same standard Batman, although instead of the rubbery cape, you get a cloth cape, which is pretty nice if you want to put him like in the Batmobile and stuff. He also does come with the more rubbery cape, but and as well as a, a windswept kind of swooshing cape that would kind of fly out behind him. But what's so cool about this figure is he has like a million different heads and accessories uh, down there. All these different expressions. Let me see if I can grab one or two out of here just so that I can give you an example of what this figure came with. Here is a stern, growling Batman head. Here is a beat up Batman head with blood and bruises coming out of it. Here is another really, really scrunched down forehead, brow Batman. And here is some kind of, you know, freaking out, frightening. I may have just gotten hit by Scarecrow's poison gas Batman. But really cool that they gave us a figure with that many different options. These two go together. Here is the first Joker. So here is what Joker looked like from the original Batman the Animated Series. And you can see, look at just so much more going on with his hair, with his lips. He's got those red lips. His eyes have that yellow sclera, whereas our previous Joker that we looked at just doesn't have quite as much of that. You can see what a difference between these two Joker figures. I think I probably like, for the most part, I tend to like the second versions of these characters better. But in this case, I'm going to have to go with the original Joker look. That's really strong. Oh, I think I have two versions of uh, Ventriloquist and Scarface. Here was a four-pack of females. The um, Batman series would cross over with the Superman cartoon that was on at the same time. So we get Supergirl, Poison Ivy, uh, Batgirl, and we get another Harley Quinn. This Harley Quinn has a little bit of the bigger head sculpt uh, than we saw with our previous Harley Quinn. I think you can probably tell the difference pretty easily how much bigger that the head sculpt is with this one. And the villain, Livewire, who I don't think we've gotten uh, a different version of. So really cool that we got this five-pack of ladies. Ah, here we go. This is what I'm talking about. Here is the Scarecrow, the first version of the Scarecrow. And you got to get his scythe out, but he doesn't really make a lot of sense unless he has on his scarecrow hat. So here is, you know, much more, you know, thin, tiny scarecrow, 
not quite as intimidating, kind of a little bit more of a goofy sort of face. Uh, I'm looking around to see if I can, yes, here he is. And then here is the Scarecrow that we saw, the second version, much more just devious and dashardly with that noose. Uh, this one more colorful, but you know, still he's got the straw hair. I kind of think I like this one better, but I definitely understand why they went with something as, as haunting as that second Scarecrow figure. Who's this? Oh, Man Bat! So it turns out that Man Bat was actually the villain in the very first episode produced titled On Leathery Wings. And so we were so blessed that we got a full Man Bat figure. He is so big that he can't be put together and still fit in his bag. Look at the wingspan on this Man Bat. And so let's see if we can get both of his arms attached and get an idea of exactly what we're talking about. I mean, just a monstrous figure here. So cool. And again, man, thank you, DC Direct, for taking the time to really produce these figures exactly the way that they appeared on the cartoon, particularly ones that were so historical such as that, right? I'm pulling you guys out because I want to talk about you later. I knew, I knew that um, I had been gifted two demon figures, so those were there. Here is Clayface. And this version of Clayface has really, again, sort of transcended the cartoon and had, has become his definitive look. Again, mammoth figure. I mean, huge. But look at that, just that muddy. Look at how each of the individual yellow teeth are sculpted in there. He's got a cool pivot waist here that allows you to really do a lot with him and with his posability, particularly with these ball jointed shoulders, you can really get him into some super muck, muck intensifying poses. This is Harley. So that's the same Harley that we saw in the five pack. This is the second version with a slightly larger head. Here's a good one. This is what I wanted to show you. Here's the difference in the Riddler. So this is the second version of the Riddler. So instead of having the coat and everything, he just has the, the leotard on with the big question mark. Now, I actually don't think I'm as impressed by this one because it doesn't have that question mark of a grin, but it is what he looked like in Batman The New Adventure. So cool, cool that we got both versions of that. This is the same Bane that we had seen. Not sure why I have two of those. Ah, another, another one where we can see the comparison. If you remember, our first Catwoman was in the gray suit, whereas this one takes its look more from the Michelle Pfeiffer look that was in the second Batman movie. But really, I think it's much more reminiscent of the way that Darwin Cook drew Catwoman in his Catwoman series. Very stylized. Very, and it just works so well with this cartoon. I really love this version of Catwoman in the all black. I just think that she's, you know, so much more feline like that. Another Two-Face. I actually think this is slightly different. I think this is the Batman The New Adventures Two-Face. And, of course, oh, Hordak. It's like Ultron Batman. So, again, they give us these crazy, crazy things. But this did appear in the cartoon. as like a robot Ultron version of Batman. And he comes, again, with, like, uh, multiple heads. He's got the crazy robot head there. But what a neat kind of treat to have. And then I saved some of the best ones for last because there was an episode of Batman uh, The New Adventures that did like a five-minute, almost perfect rendition of the comic Batman The Dark Knight. And so here's the mutant leader. We saw the fight scene between Batman and the mutant leader. We saw Carrie Kelly, the young Robin, the female Robin that was from that series written by written and drawn by Frank Miller with inks by Claus Jansen and colors by Lynn Varley. Truly one of the seminal comic books of all time. And then here is the aged, weathered Batman of Batman the Dark Knight. I mean, this thing. So look at, look at this thing. Look at how huge this is. Let's grab our previous Batman just to show you what a difference this is. Just how mammoth this Dark Knight figure is just hunched and huge and beaten and broken. And he goes toe to toe with the mutant leader in one of the best scenes of the entire cartoon. Uh, we did also get a pretty cool version of Batman in his armor from his final fight against Superman at the end of Batman the Dark Knight. 
got a little bit of kryptonite going there. If you're fighting Superman, you got to cheat just a little bit. But we have uh, this version as well. But I am so glad to have saved this incredible Batman towards the end of the uh, towards the end of the the box. Hey, listen, if you like Batman, you probably want to check out this mystery box right here, where I go through some of the greatest comic Batman uh, figures that you're ever going to see. And while you're at it, why don't you go ahead and click like, subscribe. And give us a comment. Tell us what we're doing right. Tell us what we're doing wrong. And tell us what you want to see from Carbon Scoring.